Okay, good morning. Um, welcome to Mid Kent College. Uh, thanks very much for signing up for this live webinar today. Um, my name's Steve. I'm going to be your host for the next 30 minutes. Uh, and uh, joining me today is Ant. Ant's from our animal management department. Uh, and in a moment, he'll take you through more uh, details about the subject area that you're here today to find out more about. Um, Ant, could you mute me on your, on your machine, please? Because I'm getting a little feedback. Can I hear you? Can you mute me, please? Uh, I'm just getting a little bit of feedback. Um, so just, just before I hand over to Ant, a little bit more about why we're doing this. Um, visitors to our normal open days tell us that they really value the chance to come in and have a look around the college and to speak to our tutors. Um, obviously, walking around the college at the moment really isn't possible, um, although we've got some fantastic 360 degree photos uh, that are there on our website for you to have a look at to give you a feel for the classrooms and workshops. So, you know, we can't do that bit at the moment. But what we can do is give you direct access to our tutors uh, through these live webinars so I hope that you find uh, this session helpful. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping to start uh, if you have got any questions that you want to ask, you've got a chat window to the right of the screen. Um, so do pop uh, your uh, messages in there. And uh, we've got some colleagues, Sue and Haley, who are sitting in the background uh, and they'll answer as many of those questions as they can. Um, I might put some of those questions direct to Ant a little bit later on as well. Uh, and if we don't have the opportunity to answer your question live in the session today, uh, please don't worry and we'll email you uh, once we've finished. Now, up in the top right of the screen as well, you'll see a tab called polls. If you can click on that for me, please. Uh, and if you could answer that question for me, please, just to let me know who we've got on the call today. Uh, if you could let me know if you've applied for an animal management program or not, please, that would be fantastic. Uh, okay, so it's pretty much what I expected. We've got a mix, Ant. We've got some people who are here who've applied for programs already uh, and some who are here to find out a little bit more uh, about them. So if you could just factor that in as you're talking, please, that'd be fantastic. Um, I want to start this morning uh, just by giving you uh, a quick welcome from our principal, Simon Cook. So uh, I'm just going to share Simon's video with you and I'll be back in a second. Hello there, I'm Simon and I'm the principal of Mid Kent College. It's great to be able to talk to you and uh, I so wish I, was be able, I would be able to talk to you in person but virtually and hopefully your opportunity to get to know a little bit more about the college will help you with your decisions that you need to make. So over the next 30 minutes in this virtual open event you're going to have an opportunity to meet one of the tutors from your chosen subject area. Really make the most of that time to find out what it means for you. Um, ask some questions. No question is a silly question. Please ask whatever question you've got. Take some notes, but make sure that you've got the info that you really need to make that decision about what you want to do in September. And if you're really not sure what you want to do, then you're not the only person. There are lots of people every year that we see, it won't be any different the current year under these current circumstances, who really don't know what they want to do. There might be even some of you who are thinking you really don't know what to do because you see what's going on in the world and you're not quite sure what job prospects there may be. By the time you finish your programme, the world will be a different place again and there will be many more opportunities then that may not exist now. So talk to our staff about it. And also don't be frightened if you don't know what you want to do. Have a look at some of our other sessions. Come into other sessions and see. What's really important, and one thing I say to everybody who comes into the college, you must feel comfortable with the people that you're going to be sharing your next few months and years with. And I want you to feel comfortable that you're going to be able to flourish and thrive as a person, not just study a qualification, but flourish and thrive as a person with those people you talk to. So if you don't get any of the answers that you think you need in the virtual session, we've got a brilliant team on our course inquiries and we've got a brilliant team in our careers uh, office who will help you navigate the language, what options there are, and for you, what's the right thing to do, um, which is a question we often get asked every year. I hope you enjoy your session, and I really, really hope that I get to see you very, very soon at the college, and uh, we look forward to welcoming you with us in September, if not in person, virtually, that's for sure. Good luck. Uh, 
Okay, fantastic. Thanks very much to Simon for filming that for us. Uh, I'm just going to uh, share your slides, and So uh, they're there for you. I'll let you take control now. Uh, and obviously, as Hayley's just posted into the chat, if you've got any questions about what Ant's talking about, then feel free to ask those and we'll do what we can to help you. But over to you, Ant. Okay, Riz. Um, on the slide there, you can see there's multiple levels. Um, level one, level two, and level three. So essentially, we'll be placing you on the most appropriate course for your level of GCSEs as you come out of school. So I want to give you an overview of each level briefly. Uh, but first of all, just give you some uh, comfort zone in whatever your starting point is. We're going to put you on the best starting point, the best course for you based on your level um, to allow you to be comfortable and hopefully to progress. So you can see some of my bullet points there. Really what we care about most in animal care is um, not particularly where you start, it's where you wanna go. So progression for us is key. So getting you on the right uh, course in the first place is an absolute key goal. And then looking at developing you to progress. So whether it's a level one progressing into level two, a level two progressing up to level three, many of our students have been with us for four years. So progression for us is key. So progression should lead you to your career goal. So hopefully those of you sitting here listening to this um, certainly have a real love for the subject. A love for animals obviously is key, but an understanding of where the subject can lead you, whether it would, whether it's going into something like veterinary nursing or going into animal care for sanctuary work, or maybe you're a budding conservationist, so you care more about the state of the planet and where animals sit in the wider world. So having a career goal in the first place, it might be that you know exactly what you want to do at this point and you're never going to change from that. We get students coming in with that, that ethos, they never change. So they come in, they're going to be a vet nurse and they're now, they're now vet nurses. Some people have no idea where it's going to lead, but that's cool too, because you'll probably find as you go through each level of course that you will fall in love with something, whether it is um, a scientific subject like biology or um, a kind of sciencey vet nursing subject, or even that you want to own your own pet shop and that's where you go. So I don't want you to worry about at this point if you know exactly where it's going to go. For me, it's really about having a love for the subject in the first place and a love for animals is a good starting point. The career goal might come into focus once you go through the courses and you go through the units and you go through the learning, and then find something that really engages you. But for the, for the starting point, I think your engagement is based on your love for the subject and really hopefully having a good work ethic and being able to work your way through the course for however that long may that, that course may be. It's about doing your best job on the course for the one, two, three years that you're with us at Mid Kent College. So hopefully that gives you a, a nice introduction. So what I'm going to do now is talk about each independent level. Um, you can see that there's, there's um, what, a level one, a level two and a level three. So essentially the level one we'll go on to next. So the level one is a, what we class as an introductory diploma. Um, and on that course, you're going to study a wide range of different units. Um, some units are core, things like working with others and researching a topic. And they're there really to develop your, your skills in, um, in order to aid your progression. So there's a lot of core units there that develop you as an individual. Researching a topic is a good one because you get to become a researcher and you get to um, research something you really care about and develop your writing skills and your research skills. Um, you can see there also we've got the basics of animal welfare sitting there with our introductory diploma, learning how to feed animals, learning about animal accommodation, animal handling. And there's also a unit on the level one diploma, which is a lovely introduction into science. Animal care at its core is a science. And I'll come on to that again a bit later when I go to the level twos and the level threes, which are much more scientific. But the key focus on level one is developing skills for progression into hopefully level two. So level two is where we're going to go next. Hopefully it gives you a nice introduction on the level one program. It's a one year program, that one, leading hopefully into progression to level two. Currently, we have two level twos running um, next year. Um, essentially, one of them doesn't have exams and one of them does have exams. So I'm going to talk mostly about the one that does have exams, because if you're coming in from school, it's highly likely 
uh, that you are going to progress on to our level two technical diploma. So the technical diploma essentially is an intermediate GCSE equivalent course. And to come onto that course, generally you're looking at having four grade threes or equivalent in English, maths and science to get you ready for that level two. Um, the key thing there with our level two is it is exam based partly. So I want students to understand that you know, our level two qualification and our level three qualification has mis mixed forms of assessment. So there are exams on this course and there are an awful lot of assignment based units as well. So there's two forms of assessment. We have a biology exam and an animal welfare exam on level two and lots of different assignments for you to work your way through um, on that course again in preparation like a stepping stone for level three so if you start at level two it's because your GCC profile has placed you there as a best start and that's a one-year course as well so we're looking at you progressing after that one-year course and being ready for the level three now the level three we'll move on to in a second but essentially animal biology animal health animal welfare animal behavior they're all present at level three as well but again the level goes up um, and again, it's about your comfort zone when you move on to a level three qualification, which we'll skip on to now. Effectively, what you're going on to is an A-level equivalent. So it might be that many of you are coming in from school and you go straight on to this course because you've got roughly around five GCSEs at grade four, including maths, English and science to get you ready for that one. So the level three extended diploma is an advanced course. And it spans two years, so it's the equivalent to A-levels. And on this course, as the level two, as I just said, there are exams. So the two exams in year one are animal biology and animal welfare and ethics. And there was an exam in year two, which is animal breeding and genetics. So you get a, a little bit of an echo there where you can see that animal care at, at its core is a science. So I want to talk to you briefly about what the three key cornerstones of animal care are. Essentially at our core, we are a science, mostly biology and genetics and, and stuff like that, but also we are heavily ingrained in animal welfare and ethics. So how do you look after animals? What do these animals need? Whether it's a zoo animal, whether it's a pet dog, whether it's a hamster, whether it's um, anything that you could look after that is in captivity, how do you provide that best for the species? But it's not just about the care of the species, it's about the ethics behind things, particularly at level three. So where do you get your meat from? Are you vegan? Are you vegetarian? Do you eat meat? Do you care where it comes from? Do you feel that animals should be used in entertainment? Do you agree with horse racing? Do you agree with greyhound racing? Where, what is your ethical and moral compass in relation to how animals are used? So we go a lot more into depth at level three about your thoughts and your feelings and your ethics. Moving on to the last thing I would say animal care is massively connected to and never more important at the moment, I think, is, is a concept of ecology and conservation. So saving species. It's highly likely that all of you animal carers love your planet. You care about what's going on out there with the wider contents of what we're doing um, to the planet, how we're destroying habitats or, or what we need to do to prevent extinction of animals in the wild. So again, I want you to have in your head, right? Animal care is a science. Animal care is absolutely about animal welfare and ethics and animal care at its core is ecology, conservation and the state of the planet. So I don't, well, I would say this because I manage the department, but I think animal care and applied science particularly are one, you know, the most important subjects you could be studying because it's looking to better our planet for the future. Now on completion of the level three, it will give you access to university if you choose to go. So we've got you know, a rough, well, a good amount of students going into university this year from our level three program. So again, what's your progression from level three? It's highly likely that it will be an apprenticeship, a employment or university. Now to supplement the course, we've obviously got our lovely animal rooms. So we have a large collection of animals within the college that you will work with on a practical basis throughout all levels of courses. Every single student gets a practical a week. 
And essentially the animals are there because you are and you're studying about them and you need to learn an awful lot about an awful lot. So we've got an exotics room full of snakes, lizards, spiders, tortoises, and anything you can imagine that could be classed as exotic. We have a cute and cuddly mammal room. Obviously, the, the basics like rabbits, guinea pigs, chinchillas, um, you know, multiple rodents. So essentially, those animals are there for you to look after and to learn about and manage as you go along through the course. Not only do you have a practical every week, you also have a lot of your lecturers, particularly someone like me who's practically based and I love to handle animals in classes and supplement learning in classes. So you'll get a lot of sessions where animals are going into your classes too. Um, we also have a, an aquatics room with full of fish and lots of different water um, kind of uh, setups. Also, we've got um, We've got aquatic reptiles, we've got amphibians, and we've got a lot of species. I think where we differ from other colleges, where we don't have large animals and outside animals, we've gone really into what we can keep from an exotic point of view. And our, our diversity of species is very, very good um, within our collection. So you'll learn all about that as you go through. And you'll learn all about the care of the animals and everything those animals need as you go through the course. And that will prepare you for employment. So when you go into employment after the course or whether, whatever your next step is, you know an awful lot about loads of species and you're able to handle them and care for their welfare. Now, we get out a lot. Um, we like to go on trips and we like to supplement our courses with enrichment. So whether that's zoo trips, as places like Port Lim, Colchester Zoo and Wingham Wildlife Park, um, we, get, we get out and we like to, I don't think there's anything better that we can do and to put a student into a situation where they can learn. So a zoo, particularly a good zoo with good education and good conservation and good enclosures is a good way to learn and experience is everything. We do residentials, particularly at level three, the South Africa one, um, which is a two, a two week safari. That's at level three in the second year. We've also in the past done New Forest that we're looking at doing next year. And, and if you know your geography, New Forest has access to lots of different animal collections. One of them is Monkey World, which is not too far away. We also do lots of day trips such as London Aquarium in this country, but also Norsica in France. And we've developed quite good links with visiting speakers. Um, you may or may not be aware that Medway now has officially its first ever zoo. It's called Fenbell. It's Fenbell Conservation Centre and we're linked with them. Also with places like Kent Owl Academy, they've come in to do talks on work experience and the work that they do. And we've had the Cats Protection in and many more. So we get lots of visiting speakers in to supplement your lessons as well as going out quite a bit as well. Okay, hopefully that gives you a flavour of what we're about. In Relation to career opportunities and progression, they are very, very wide and very, very vast. It's highly likely when you come into animal care that you might not know what you want to do. A love for animals sometimes in the first point part, part is enough. Mostly, um, we do get a lot of veterinary nurses, but increasingly students are moving into um, wildlife and conservation animal biology, zoology, animal behavior degrees, whether it's going on to university to, sub, uh, to, to study these subjects or it's going straight into employment afterwards, um, things like zookeeping, kennels and catteries, animal welfare officers, particularly animal sanctuaries, because there's a lot of them now, because animals do need uh, care and they do, do need looking after. We also have a link into veterinary science. It is possible from the level three to go to study to be a vet. Across the last 10 years, I would say we've probably got about five or six students have gone that pathway. So it is doable. It's very difficult, but it is doable. So again, looking at these career and progression opportunities, it may be something that you considered in the past. It may be something you've never considered before. But again, think about where you want this to end because it's going to be a journey. It could be a one year journey. It could be a three or four year journey. But hopefully that gives you a flavour of where our students end up. And hopefully it gives you an understanding of what we're about and, and the kind of experience you have within animal care at Mid-Kent College. Okay. 
Is that okay, Steve? I want to pick up on one from the chat, first of all, if that's okay. Um, so you talked about uh, the exotics room. And we've got a question, uh, yep. which is, what about exotic birds? Do we do anything with birds? We've got um, some bird provision. It's quite a difficult one to have um, because we don't have outside provision, but we do have bird provision. We've also got a link into Kent Owl Academy, which is the specialist on owls and birds of prey. So what we're looking at doing next year is using them a little bit more where if we've not got access to birds in our college collection, we're trying to get access to animals that we don't have externally. We do have a parrot called Charlie, who's um, a lovely little parrot. Um, but yeah, we get, we, we've got quail on campus, we've got parrots on campus. So essentially we do have some provision but where birds particularly um, are difficult to house, we will go external for that. Okay, that's brilliant. Thank you. Um, I've got a couple of questions for you as well, Ant, if that's okay. And that just, that just gives everyone else listening a chance to think about anything else yeah. that they want to ask you. Um, you've talked about uh, where our students have progressed onto when they finish at the college. Um, I guess I'm yeah. interested in, in you and your colleagues in the animal management department. Uh, you know, we pride ourselves on the fact that our tutors yeah. have got industry experience and know what it's like to work in these sectors. So can you tell us a little bit about your background, please? Yeah. Well, my background started as a student when I was 20. Um, I went to Canterbury College when I was 20 and did the level three that I just spoke about. And I was lucky enough, actually, that my my specialism was always handling. I, I, you know, I was a good animal handler. And that led into a job role at Canterbury College, becoming um, a trained demonstrator, training their students how to look after, uh, how to ma handle the animals. So essentially, I started as a, a trainer demonstrator to students, and that led into um, teaching. So the practical teaching went into formal teaching. So my background was hands on. Many other um, members of my team are, are more scientific. Their background has been going to university straight after and then coming to teaching afterwards. So what we do have actually within our team is a lot of people that have got very different backgrounds, but very different specialists in certain things, like whether it's biology in the case of Kate or whether it's Angela with a uh, love for horses whether it's myself, with, I'm a bit of an exotics nut. So it's for me, it's snakes, lizards, spiders, and all the creepy crawlies and the weird and wonderful things you could possibly imagine, um, and the care of. So a lot of my, my teachers as well, have, they started as animal carers. So not only are they academically uh, qualified and, and qualified in teaching, but they've actually been there, seen it, and done it, which I think is key. So you get, you get a different experience from... The different lecturers depending on their specialisms um we've got joe who's very much into her aquatics um, and her fish care we've got louise who's into her biology and animal welfare um we've got you know again yovana who's into her biology but also into the ethics around stuff as well so you get you know you get a lot of different things from a lot of my team so hopefully that gives you an understanding of where we've come from but Fundamentally, I would say a lot of us are animal carers by nature, and we're still looking after quite a lot of stuff. And our background, a lot of the time, has come through doing it. No, that's brilliant. Thank you. Um, in a minute, in a minute, I'm going to come on and talk about uh, study programmes uh, and what that means. But uh, in terms of English and maths in particular, how does that fit in with what you do in animal management? Um, it goes alongside, obviously, maths is everywhere. I'll start with maths first of all, but, you know, whether you look at we we try very hard to link in maths to what we do with animal care, whether it's rationing in out food, whether it's um, dealing with the fish tanks and the amount of water in fish tanks. Essentially, maths is everywhere with what we do. But more so, I think English is the key one for developing skills as you go up through levels, because you could be the best animal carer hands on you know, practically, but if, um, again, developing your skills with getting your point across, with your research skills, with your writing skills in relation to bouncing up through the levels, I think that the English 
is much more um, prevalent in developing the English skills to go up through the levels. So when you start thinking about getting your point across in an in animal ethics exam, welfare and ethics exam, taking to pieces a subject, you know, giving your point, giving evidence and explaining yourself, I think English is very, very key to that. Again, with the science and a degree of mathematics, it really, they're ingrained in animal care. Whether it is looking with mathematics, looking at the size of enclosures, looking for the, the stocking densities and how many animals you can have in there. But we cross over quite a bit and we try to get the maths and English links in there as much as possible as we go through the study program. And we work quite well with the English and maths department, you know, particularly in terms of the English with exam questions and answering questions appropriately to get enough points to get the best grades possible. Okay, that's brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, one final question from me, and that's that you, you mentioned a lot about trips and visits and, and you sort of talked about some of the things that your students normally do in a normal year. I think it's fair to say that might look slightly different next year. So I didn't know if you wanted to just mention that briefly, just so everyone's clear on, on what next year might look like and what might be a little bit different. One of the things we're looking at that is going to be most difficult to deliver uh, with social distancing would be the practicals. Um, first of all, the practicals, they will be going ahead, but we'll be looking at doing it on a rotor system so everyone's getting access. Um, and we've got limited space in the practical rooms because of social distancing if it stays the same. Um, but obviously the practicals will be going ahead as we go through. In relation to um, trips, it's, it's highly likely that we'll be looking at trips taking place once things clear up a little bit, um, rather than trying to go into a trip or a visit straight away. Uh, that would probably be inappropriate at, at this point to commit to. The same with practicals. We're looking at, you know, if a lot more hands-on practical needs to go um, in place later, we're looking at maybe front-loading more of the theory and then kind of looking at the practical later. One of the key um, challenges we have is um, a lot of our units are practical based. So whether it's management of exotics at the level three or it's um, um, animal health at level two, lots of them involve getting your hands on animals and physically doing stuff. So I think for us, it's a challenge to balance that in a blended approach so we can actually deliver that at the most appropriate time. That is most likely if social distancing state stays the same or is kind of limiting the amount of people that we have in a practical that that's going to be done on campus on a rotor. And maybe actually there's an opportunity there to create a much more personal practical experience, because if we're having less people accessing the college collection, then arguably you get a better experience if there's, say, three people working with a technician looking after the animals on a rotor than there would be for having much larger groups going in there. Does that make sense? Because that's something we generally do across summer and holidays anyway. We, we invite students in um, to get a bit more of a hands-on experience with less people there throughout half terms and holidays as well. Yeah, yeah, it's perfectly understandable. Um, brilliant. Thank you very much for your time the, this morning, Anne. What I'm going to do is just switch your mic off for a second just while I uh, wrap things up and uh, cover a few more bits. Uh, so... Uh, let me just share my presentation. So uh, just a little bit more uh, about the college generally, really. Um, if you're not already aware, we've got two campuses. So we've got our campus in Gillingham, uh, which is our Medway campus. And we've also got a campus in Maidstone, uh, which is uh, just along the Tunbridge Road. Uh, both are multi-million pound facilities. We've got lots of workshops there, salons, social zones, coffee shops, refectories, um, learning resource centres, uh, and all of our support, support teams are spread across those campuses as well. It's important to note for animal management, um, that's only currently available in our Medway campus. Um, so please be aware of that um, if, if you are looking at studying this particular topic. In terms of how you get to our campus, uh, we've got good access uh, from buses, which both, uh, both campuses have bus stops directly outside uh, and for train travel as well uh, we've got mainline uh, railway stations within about a 10 minute walk from each of the campuses um, we've got a lot more information about how you can reach the campuses uh, on our website so uh, do click through and go and have a look uh, there 
Uh, I said I would talk briefly about study programs. Uh, so basically your study program consists of four main elements. Uh, you've got your technical professional qualification. So in this case, that's your animal management qualification. Uh, and around that, you'll do some more work on English and maths. Uh, you'll do some personal development work as well. And you'll also complete an industry placement. Now, depending on what you've already achieved, your English and maths classes might be uh, functional skills. It might be uh, a retake of your GCS if you didn't quite get the results that you were hoping for, uh, or it could be some stretch and challenge really to help you keep building on those English and math skills uh, that you've developed while you've been at school. Um, when you have your personal development sessions, you'll cover everything from uh, protecting your own health and well-being and mental health, uh, right through to having a work ready interview to help you get ready for the employment that comes after your program. Um, and you'll also have an industry placement where you'll put the key skills that you're learning on your animal management program into practice in a real work setting. Uh, and you know we've got great connections with uh, lots of uh, local organizations, uh, as Ant's already mentioned, a couple of them uh, who can help us with that. But obviously, if you've got links uh, to uh, a relevant organization where you can practice your animal care skills as well, um, then that will be absolutely fantastic. Um, we spoke to our course inquiries team, who are one of the uh, teams that are available to help you uh, and answer your queries at any point, really. And we asked them, OK, well, what are the most uh, frequently asked questions that, that people want to know the answers to? Uh, and this is what they gave them. So we thought we'd just cover those off quickly for you. So how many days a week will I be in college? Um, it varies per program. And, you know, I say this. Uh, with reference to what Ant's already said in that timetables next year might look slightly different from the norm. Um, you know, we have to balance uh, the number of students and staff that we have on campus at any one time to make sure that everyone stays safe and will always comply with um, social distancing regulations as advised by the government. So, you know, while next year might look slightly different, in a typical year, um, most 16 to 18 year olds will be on a full time program. Uh, so that means that you will you can expect to be at college for sort of three, three and a half days a week. Um, next year, that might be that some of that time is uh, on campus in in a class or in a practical session in a workshop. It might mean that some of that time is also at home being supported virtually by your tutors as well. So, um, you know, your individual department will advise you as to how that's going to work. If you're an apprentice, that's slightly different. Uh, normally, that's uh, one day a week at college and the rest in the workplace. Um, can you study more than one subject? Well, you know, it, this isn't like doing A-levels at school where you can pick a mix of subjects. So at college, you'll focus on one uh, and you'll specialise on that technical and professional qualification uh, and obviously with the other bits of your study programme that wrap around it. Um, Ant's already mentioned that you know lots of our students do go on to higher level study at university. Uh, our programs are eligible for UCAS points, so you can get those points to help secure your uh, application. And we've got a team that can help you with your university applications as well uh, and support you through that progress um, process. Sorry, uh, and obviously you know we do a lot to prepare students to go into work as well. So if university isn't quite the route for you to get where you want to be, um, then we we do a lot of work to support you going in into employment instead. Um, what do the different levels mean? Ant's already talked about that a little bit, so I'll, I'll push through this bit, but it, broadly speaking, a level two program is equivalent to GCSE and a level three program is equivalent to A-levels. Um, I think you know, you've know you got specific entry requirements for each program that are on the website, but the most important thing is what Ant said right at the start, which is that um, we will help you find the right uh, the right program for you. So not only the right program, but the right level, uh, which will make sure that you get the best starting point uh, in your time at college. And then we can support you through um, progressing through the levels, but we'll help you get onto the right program at the right time. Um, how much do programs cost? Well, uh, your programs are funded uh, by the government for 16 to 18 year olds. If you are over 19, uh, then there are fees to pay, but there are concessions that are available uh, depending on your circumstances. Um, there are some programs where you'll need to buy equipment or uniform as well. Uh, now we do have bursaries and student finance support that are available too. Uh, and if you click on the uh, tab at the top of your screen, which is handouts, uh, we've put a few uh, bits and pieces in there which you might find useful to download and have a look through. So you've got some common college FAQs. Um, we've got a guide to how to apply for your program uh, and a student finance guide there as well. So if you are interested uh, in how finance works and the support that's available to you, uh, I would uh, absolutely recommend downloading those. 
And then finally, is there a deadline to apply? Uh, well, we've been accepting applications for this coming September uh, since last November. Uh, so absolutely ready for you to apply now. Um, what I would say is, you know, while we, while we might may be in a position where we can still accept applications into the first couple of weeks of September, obviously that's going to be subject to spaces being available. So I do advise, you know, if you've decided this is the route for you, then send your application in through the website as soon as you can to make sure that you can have your telephone interview with a tutor and, and get your place secure. Um, you know, if, if you do leave it too late, it's not the end of the world. Uh, but if courses are full, uh, then we'll have to put you on a waiting list. And then obviously we can only bring you onto the program uh, if we've got spaces available. Uh, just a couple more things to tell you. So please bear with me just a, a couple of moments more. Um, just in terms of life at college, we've got a lot that goes on throughout the year um, that's put together by our student engagement team uh, you know, and, and also opportunities that other students make available for you. So, you know, we, we have live gigs from our music students. We've got pantomimes and shows from our performing arts students. Uh, we've got trips from visiting speakers, as Anne's just mentioned. Uh, our students are brilliant at fundraising as well, uh, and there'll be opportunities to do some fundraising for our chosen charity of the year, which is Air Ambulance Kent, Surrey, Sussex. Um, now, obviously, some of those events might look slightly different this year. You know, we, we would normally have a big Freshers Fair event uh, at each campus at the start of the year. That might be slightly different this year, but we'll keep you posted as that develops. Uh, but lots of things for you to get involved in while you're here. A quick word on student support. Um, you know, if you've spent the last five, six years at a particular school uh, and you're thinking about changing to a different environment now, then that can be a pretty nerve wracking step, really. Um, so, you know, my advice would be don't worry. We're here to help you. We're held here to help you make that change from studying at school so that you can get the most out of your time at college. Um, I've already mentioned that we've got financial support available and, you know, that download is there for you uh, in the download section. We've got student welfare welfare teams at both campuses. If you need someone to talk to, we've got trained counsellors as well. Uh, and then we've got uh, support workers who come in uh, and work with you in class. Uh, we've also got careers advisors that Simon mentioned right at the start, who are always on hand to talk you through your options and to help you with uh, your next steps after college. Now, for some of those teams, we are running additional webinars. So if, if you really want to know more about student support or about careers, for example, uh, then we will have separate web webinars running for those teams. So you can track down that session where you booked this one uh, and register for that. If you do have additional learning support needs, then we've got a dedicated team that's available to support you as well. Uh, now, rather than do that as a webinar, because obviously everything that you, you may need to discuss about that is quite individual to you and quite personal. Um, what we'd recommend is if you go to the help and advice tab on our website uh, and then that will link you in with the team. So in terms of what comes next, uh, I think, you know, we, we've got a mix of people. Some have applied, some haven't. So if you haven't already applied, uh, if you click through to the website, find the program that you're interested in and get your application in as soon as you can. Um, use your predicted GCSE grades when you complete your application if you don't have, uh, if you haven't sat the exams previously. Um, and once you've submitted your application form, we then will aim to get in touch with you through our admissions team within about 15 working days uh, to arrange your phone interview with you where you can ask more questions uh, and then you get offered your place uh, from that. Now if you're on the call today because you've already applied and you're waiting for more information, maybe you've had your interview, maybe you haven't, it's fantastic that you've made that decision to study with us. We're really looking forward to having you uh, joining us uh, but please bear with us as our admissions team uh, go through the processes they need to to, to get your place secured. Again, have a look at those handouts uh, and, uh, you know, th there'll be more information there. Final piece. Uh, so I will let you go in just a second. Uh, if you need any help at all, then there are uh, a few different ways where you can get in touch with us. Uh, and We'll do everything we can to help give you the information you need to get yourself ready uh, and sorted out for September. Uh, we've got our course inquiries team uh, who are contactable on the phone on 01634 40 2020 uh, and you know they speak to uh, you know dozens of people every day you've got queries about our programs they really know their stuff uh, and they're incredibly helpful too you can also reach them through live chat on our website uh, or you can email course.inquiries at midkent.ac.uk so do use them uh, they're really helpful and and they'll help you make your decision 
Um, finally, you will receive a copy of this webinar uh, through your email that you registered with uh, within about half an hour is finishing. So if you want to watch this again to go back over anything that we've said or you want to send it on to someone else who you may know is interested in animal management but couldn't be here today, uh, then you're able to do that as well. So uh, on behalf of the college, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, Ant, for giving us your time to come and speak about your programs as well. Uh, and if there's anything else we can do for you, please let us know. Um, I'm just going to check quickly that we haven't got anything waiting in the chat for us. Um, no, so uh, with that as the case, thanks. All, thank you all again for attending. And um, yeah, we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you.